The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, in collaboration with CARFA, is ensuring that more frontline health workers are trained in the area of field epidemiology to meet the growing needs of disease surveillance and case investigations in our health sector. The training will include effective disease detection, investigation control and prevention, which will require a public health workforce well-trained in principles and practices of field epidemiology. The training is expected to further strengthen this country's capacity in surveillance, epidemiology and outbreak response. The Caribbean Public Health Agency CARFA, in conjunction with the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, continues to work with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment to provide a three months in-service training program geared at improved detection and response to disease and events of public health importance or international concern. This program, Frontline Surveillance Training, targets public health workers on the front lines of surveillance, data collection, monitoring analysis and response. The healthcare workers that are being trained include medical doctors both from the community and at the hospital level, surveillance nurses both from the community and the hospital, environmental health officers, medical technologists and statisticians. The objectives of the program are to increase appreciation for the role of data among public health workers, for monitoring the health of the community and for providing information for decision making to improve basic surveillance, data collection and analysis, interpretation and communication, to improve the quality and use of surveillance data for disease and outbreak detection, to improve the sharing and dissemination of health information, and to improve response including case investigation and outbreak investigation to public health events. During the training program, the participants got the opportunity to learn and practice the fundamental skills used in frontline surveillance, including the use of case definition, disease detection, and reporting summarizing of data using simple tables and graphs, case investigation, outbreak investigation, and response surveillance monitoring and evaluation, as well as data analysis and interpretation for decision making. Participants will spend up to 12 days in three workshops in the classroom and the remaining 8 to 10 weeks back at their jobs where they will conduct field projects to practice, implement and reinforce what they have learned. Participants who successfully complete the program will receive a certificate of completion. Epidemiologist and country coordinator of the Field Epidemiology Training Program, Tamara Bob, gave us an overview of the program. Dr. Laura Lee Budram of CARFA and the FLT program coordinator shared with us her feedback of this cohort of participants. We also spoke with some participants who shared with us how they felt about the program. We're here with Dr. Laura Lee Budram and she is the CARFA um, specialist for the Caribbean concerning this program. And she's going to tell me a little bit about the program, how it works, how it would benefit our health sector here and St. Vincent by extension. Mm -hmm. So I'm here this week uh, working with various public health workers in the Ministry of Health in St. Vincent and we're training them in the field epidemiology skills. So basically what we're training the workers to do is to be able to collect and analyze disease surveillance data to be able to pick up important patterns and trends. For example, suppose an outbreak situation is occurring, we're going to equip them with the necessary tools to go into communities, assess the situation, um, if there is, in fact, an outbreak occurring, we'll be able to teach them what are the appropriate prevention and control measures to actually apply to reduce that disease situation. And how have you found the participants so far in this cohort of the program? They have been very responsive, very interested. It's in always a pleasure to see uh, taking persons from ground zero knowledge to equip them with the necessary tools and at the end of the program actually see them apply their skills. Okay, it's really awesome when we get the opportunity to receive this kind of training because it is necessary for our health mm -hmm. sector. How would this program be um, monitored and how would it be um, measured, like the success of it? Mm -hmm. So one of the key features of this program is that we build a very heavy monitoring and evaluation component into it. The short-term outcome of the program is that we are equipping the public health workers with necessary skills, and uh, tools to immediately improve their performance in the immediate job environments. In the long term, however, the ministry can actually utilize these persons if there are situations occurring in country, they can actually pull them out of those immediate um, job environments and apply them to other situations that are taking place. 
So we work with the ministries to develop a long-term HR and planning strategy to see how they can best use these people. And the training is just not one-off training. This is the first cohort, but we expect the ministry to be able to roll out several cohorts in the future to ensure that there's a continuous supply of skilled workers within the public health sector to be able to tackle the problems of morbidity and mortality in the country. I'm glad you mentioned that because now the, our health sector has a huge um, staff. And so how would other persons, be, would CARFA be able to sponsor the program so that other healthcare workers can be trained within this program? CARFA can help in certain situations, but we are also have a reliant on donor funding. So when we establish and develop that HR strategy with the ministry, we discuss sustainability with the ministry. How can CARF and the ministry actually both work together to come up with the funding that is needed for these programs? So it's a joint collaborative effort. So we're here with Ms. Tamara Bob. She's an epidemiologist and the coordinator for the Field Epidemiology Training Program. Why is this program important to St. Vincent and the Grenadines at this time? The Field Epidemiology Training Program is important now as at any other time because it really aims to build capacity in disease detection and response. It strengthens our capacity to be able to pick up on disease cases and to respond appropriately. We have a wide range of healthcare workers, including doctors, nurses, environmentalists, um, among others. Um, why is there such a mix? These officers are the officers on the front line, the officers who would first come into contact with a disease case, and so they need to be um, adequately trained so that they would be able to detect the cases and to basically collect the information that's needed, um, prepare reports and send it up to a higher level so that action can be taken. Okay. What other benefits would the Ministry of Health or our health sector and the country by extension um, receive from such a training like this? Improvements in the surveillance system in terms of data collection, analysis, interpretation and sharing of data means that the Ministry is able to have better quality data with which to make um, decisions in terms of resources they allocate, whether financial or human resources. The coordinator for the program, can you tell me how exactly is the program set up? Okay, the guiding principle of the field epidemiology training program is learning by doing. So the program is structured in such a way that the majority of the time is spent in the field. The participants just spend about 20% of their time in the classroom where they learn principles of epidemiology, biostatistics, and then they go out into the field, back onto their jobs, where they spend the majority of time completing field assignments. We have a small cohort of participants. We have just 14 participants, and this is intentional. We want the participants to have adequate guidance, mentorship throughout the program, we have seven mentors who will work along with the participants throughout the, for the duration of the program. So we're here with Mr. Junior Dawes, and he's an environmental health officer, and he's benefiting from the Frontline um, training program. Tell me, how have you found the training so far? Well, this Frontline program is very much enlightening. Uh, dealing with the matter of data collection, information, basically gathering information, having baseline data, so that we can, you know, over a period of time, look back at this data and make comparison. This information would help us to be able to make informed decisions that would help us to much more benefit the department and on a whole benefit the country by extension. I found it supposed to be very much enlightening. Uh, it refreshes my memory in some areas and in more areas it makes me more alert and aware as to things that I can do that can um, better bring out the whole aspect of my job. Would you be able to share any of this information that you have gained with any of your co-workers to enhance the way in which you operate? Most naturally. Back at my department, I normally try to see how much I can innovate and invent, and I would have learned quite a few things in this program that will be able to not only make my job much more easier, but to make it more professionally organized and being presented. We're here with Dr. Alicia Bonnady, and she's one of the participants in the program. How have you found it so far? 
So far, the program has been excellent. Um, it's a tremendous experience for us all as public health workers. Um, as we are on the front line, I think it's an excellent program for us so far. Um, how do you think what you've learned here will be applicable to what you're doing um, at a hospital working in the emergency room? Okay, so as a medical officer at the Milton Cates Memorial Hospital in the emergency room, we see these diseases as they come in. We see these patients present to us first. So we have to be able to make these clinical diagnoses on the spot so we can then relay this information to the necessary environmentalists, other health bodies who we would need to contact in the event that there's an outbreak or let's say that there is an epidemic of some sorts. We on the front line need to be able to be equipped with this kind of information. For example, if we are seeing more increases in conjunctivitis, which we know as being red eyes, we'll be able to therefore prep our pharmacists, we'll be able to prep our workplaces to let them know that there's going to be some burden of this disease on our society. Okay. Um, how do you think the blend of participants um, is working in terms of this? Because there's a range of public health workers. Um, how do you think that mix has been going so far? So far, the mix has been wonderful because in terms of our health system and public health workers, we all function as a multi-sectoral organization. So the nurses, the doctors, the environmentalists, the public health workers, we all need to function together. So we would be the ones who would see these um, patients come in. We will make the clinical diagnosis. We have to function with the nurses who would then have to prep these patients, be able to administer these medications. And then we would have to let these environmentalists know that they would have to then go back to these areas where we might have seen an outbreak, let's say, of dengue. We would want to um, go and investigate what where the collection of water is coming from. Why was why are we seeing increased numbers during seasonal times of the year? So these are just really, really good, really good reasons why we need to come together and work together as a multi-sectoral entity. All this information that you have learned, do you is it done in a way that you can help your co-workers um, in terms of disseminating information to them? Definitely, definitely. This field epidemiology program has definitely taught us that we can then go back and let them know what we have learned, let them know why, we, why it is so important for us to become, come up with these diagnoses on the spot, to be accurate, to be documenting, make sure that there's adequate collection, make sure that there's timely collection of information so that we'll be able to lessen the disease burden on our country. On a scale of 1 to 10, in terms of intensity of the program, 10 being the highest, well, how would you grade this um, program? I would definitely grade it as an 8 for now. It's a 12-week program, and we just completed the first week. But it's definitely intense. It's full day's work. It's collection of data. It's numbers. It's figures. But definitely will be beneficial to us as public health workers. So we're here with Cheryl and Jack, and she's an employee of the lab. Um, you're a part of this um, epi field epidemiology training program. How has it been so far? Uh, very interesting, extremely informative, uh, and a definite eye-opener for a lab employee. There's a lot of figures that you have been dealing with, and you look quite comfortable dealing with that compared to some other um, students. How has that component of it been um, generally for you? Um, to be honest, I've always been pretty... IT savvy so that part wasn't too bad and especially the numbers as well in terms of learning anything new not necessarily but expanding on what I already know that was a plus what would you say is the most challenging part of the program so far I think the most challenging part is trying to figure out how to adapt what I learned here to my current post in the, at the lab um, there's a lot of information um, a lot of steps that well places where i see we could do some sort of improvement because one of the things i think they highlighted is the importance of the surveillance cycle and not just the surveillance cycle but the flow of information in the surveillance cycle so it's an opportunity for the lab to see how we could improve on our contribution in the cycle and so essentially this training would be beneficial to the work that you do at the lab definitely it might be a little hard in initial stages adapting the skills but it's definitely going to be beneficial to the lab all right thank you and how would you rate the program in terms of its intensity on a scale of 1 to 10 10 being the highest how would you rate the program so far on a scale of 1 to 10 ease if we're saying 10 is the easiest that's how i'm gonna put it for me right uh i would definitely say about 9 10 it's somebody for somebody who's new to surveillance the material is very digestible um, maybe some, in terms of the monitoring and evaluation part of it, some of it we could have used a little bit more time, but it wasn't bad at all. 
So we're here with one of the nurses in the program, Sister Glendarine Brown. How have you found the training so far? As a public health nurse, this training would be beneficial to me in the sense that one of my major role is surveillance. Um, so this training will enhance my capabilities and skills to be more efficient on the job.